This is Catan Seafarer's Expansion, Scenario 8, The Wonders of Catan. So in this scenario, you're going to need two double extenders and two single extenders. You will also need 19 ocean hexes. You'll need three deserts. These hexes are laid out in the scenario. Tells you how many of each you need. There is only a robber. There is no pirate in this scenario. Right in front of me, I have the pieces that you're going to need to set up the board. So you need your five two to one ports. And then in this scenario, there's four of the standard three to one ports. You will need Catan chips. Each player will start with one. It's not a victory point, it's a marker. And they're used to keep track of your wonder. We'll come back to that. The Catan chits are also used when you build a settlement on one of the small islands. Unlike the other games in Seafares, you only get one victory point if you find an island in this scenario. These pieces that I have here are just random little punch outs that we've collected from all the other games. We're going to use these to mark places on the map. We'll explain those more after we set up the board. Wonders. So these are the wonders of Catan. To win this game, there are two different ways. One way to win this game is to complete your wonder. You can see there's four different squares on each wonder. That one Catan chit that you're given at the beginning of the game, once you pay, let's do look at the theater, once you pay a wood, a brick, and three sheep, you would place your marker Catan chit on one. The next time that you can upgrade with a wood, a brick, and three sheep, you would pay those and move to two and then to three, and then to four. Once you get to four, you have completed your wonder, and you win Catan. The other way to win is if you have 10 victory points, and you are the furthest along on your wonder. So let's say I am on level one, and the other player is on part two. If this player has 10 victory points, they would win this game of Catan because they have 10 victory points and they are furthest along on their wonder. So those are the two different ways that you can win this scenario. We're gonna set up the board first and then I will explain the requirements for each of the wonders because some of them are just more easy to explain once the board is set up. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up. We'll speed up while we do that and we will be right back. Remember, every person 
gets one Katanchit, and that is their marker for their wonder. So I'm going to hand those out first. Also a reminder, you have to start on the main island. If you build out to this island, or this island, and you build a settlement there, you get only one victory point for this scenario. So the setup for this board is a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to place this down so that we can zoom in. So on this zoom in, you can see five brown squares. Those brown five squares are called the waste land because they're on the desert. It is the waste land. When placing your first original settlements, you cannot build them on those brown squares. You can't start on the wasteland. You also cannot start with your original settlements on the exclamation points. The two purple squares are called the straight. You cannot build your original settlement there either. These are places that you have to get to. And the reason that there's the exclamation points, uh, the exclamation marks, is because if you built there or here, you would not be able to build on the straight. And the straight is needed for the wonders. So I'm going to take the book off and I'm going to mark on our board with some tokens, the wasteland, the exclamation points, and the straight. All right, so the wasteland, I'm just using blank circle tokens for the wasteland. For those red exclamation points, I'm going to use blank mini harbors and for the straight I'm going to use these tokens okay so that's just a visual that we like to use so that we remember where the straights and the wastelands are so now I'll talk a little bit about the wonders. So remember to win this game, it's important to start building these wonders. The cathedral, before you can start building it, you need one city and six victory points. That's straightforward if you know how to play Catan. Once you have one city and six victory points, you need to tell the rest of the players that that's what you're going for. And you do that by placing your boat on that wonder. Now, if red all of a sudden builds a city and six victory points, they can also put their boat on that wonder. Now it's a race. The first person that can pay for step one, one brick, one wheat, and three rock, places their Catan chit on square one, and they claim that wonder. Okay? So, let's say it was red. Blue would have to remove their boat, and I'd have to start going after another wonder. Okay? So that's how you claim the wonders. First, you have to declare that you're going for it. Then, once you can pay, you place your chit on number one. Theater, requirements, two cities. Very straightforward. Monument, requirement, city at a harbor, and a trade route with five ships or roads. So basically, the minimum for the longest road. 
very basic. The Great Bridge. The requirement is to have one settlement at the strait. It does not matter if you have your settlement here or here. Once you have it there, you get to claim the Great Bridge. All right. And the last wonder is the Great Wall. The Great Wall, the requirements are to build settlements at the wasteland, the brown squares. Now, settlements at the wasteland, there's no number there. So, interpret it as you wish. We interpret it as two. Settlements, plural, two or more, okay? So, as soon as you have two settlements on the wasteland, it's yours. All right, so those are the wonders. That's an explanation of that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place our settlements, roll to see who goes first, and as we start claiming the wonders, we will pause the game and explain the wonders and who's claiming what and explaining um, the movement of the chits up to four. And I should say as well, if by chance you can pay for two levels in one turn, you can do that. But that would mean you'd have to have two brick, two wheat, and six rocks. You better be hoping that a seven is not rolling if you're trying to do that. So it's safer to do one level on a turn, but it can still happen. So we're going to start rolling and see who goes first and start our play. the straights so they are claiming the great bridge so we'll put it here with their boat on it so remember they've claimed it but they do not own it yet Technically, it's impossible for anybody else to claim it, but we're going to put it here to the side so we know where red is. Once they pay, three wood, one wheat, one sheep, we'll give this card to the kids and they will put their Catan chit on number one and go up from there. So this has been claimed, so Dad and I have to go find somewhere else.
in one turn, thankfully, a seven did not roll. In one turn, I was able to build a settlement on my second wasteland, so I was able to claim it. And on the same turn, I was able to build the first step. So I have my Catan chip. I have my Catan chip on stage one. I can take off my boat. And now I own the Great Wall. I'm the only one with a wonder. So if I had 10 victory points, I would actually win the game right now. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six, so I'm close, but not quite. And everybody else is, is getting close to getting their wonders. So it goes on for a little bit longer. So I just want to point out, so the kids were on three, they paid to get to four, but in order to win the game, they actually need to pay for this one. So as soon as they're able to pay and complete the wonder, they will win. So the game's not over if you're on four, the game's over when you're, once your Catan chit is off your wonder. finished my great wall um, so like I've explained before we always play on a very random board we don't use twos and twelves now what we did learn from playing this this one was normally the gold mines are in the book they're on the little islands um, we placed them on the main island it made for not a lot of land building <coughs> Uh, main island building. Dad was really the only one that maneuvered his way across. Um, me, myself and the kids, we kind of stayed in our own little areas and that's all we did. It was just try to, so we had great numbers. Um, but you know what? It made for a quick game. I will say that. I think it, that was, it was nice. Uh, we were in the mood for a quicker game and this did make it quick. Um, so that was nice. So anyway, that is the wonders of Catan. This is basically the final scenario in Seafarer's expansion. The last one technically is scenario nine, which is called the New World. And I'll just show you the New World here. It's an empty board. So scenario nine is Make your own board, make your own rules, and have fun. Uh, we will not be doing a how to play with this one. Because everybody can just kind of make up, do your own thing. Make up your board, make up your own board and have fun. That's about it. Alright, so that's it. Keep playing and have fun.